good afternoon, so how you guys doing today? Today is a cold day. I was gonna try to do a video outside, but it was windy. Even though today it's a it's a it's a sunny day, there's no more snow. Thank God, but it's the wind is beyond bearable out there today, especially when it's like 20, 20, what, 22, 23? But it is winter time, so God is good. Must expect, gotta expect some, something, right? Um, I got, I got a good one today. You know, I was, um, I was watching the YouTube channel, and uh, these girls, there was some, t there was, it was a TikTok, but it was on, it was on YouTube. I guess they're doing that now. So it was, it was about how the food, cause I, you know, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. I don't, I don't do TikTok. I used to, but I stopped it when I was in Mexico. But I took it down. Um, and, and, and the ladies, there was um, basically talking about how expensive groceries is, <laughs> and I can definitely feel them on that one because, yeah, groceries is outrageous. And I don't even go to those fancy places like Whole Foods. I don't know how people still go to Whole Foods. <laughs> I don't know how, how they still go there. I don't know how Whole Foods is still in business as of right now. Anyway, um, but yeah, so there was, there, and, and it really hurt because I guess they're single mothers with kids because some were single actually. But what really caught my attention is when um, one of them said um, they took their kids to McDonald's. It wasn't, even, it was only one kid actually. And they brought two, I guess two different combos and it came to 50, U.S. dollars. I was like, and that's what really caught my attention. When did fast food, which is rubbish, garbage, not even healthy for you, I I been stopped going to fast food. Like, like, no, I can't say that because I did go to a, I did go to fast food a few times in Mexico, but constantly I used to go when I was living in California. I used to do more fast food at least a few times a week. But nowadays, you know, fast food is getting expensive. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This is when you need to start eat, eating healthy. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, if you're gonna spend the same amount of money for, for that, you might as well try to eat healthy, right? Anyway, so I was like, wow, Jesus. And I felt so bad for these women. I felt, it, it, it touched my heart. Because I see them, I mean, I see their, their, their desperation in their face, their expressions like they're struggling. They really are struggling. And I, and you know, I always talk to Jesus like, Jesus, what? What's, I, 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 I knew I wasn't the only one, but I'm like, Jesus. And I went to the bathroom and I said, Jesus, do you hear me? Because I don't know. I, I, it just, and he, he, he answered me. So when I came back from the restroom, I looked at my phone and he answered me. He, he, he gave me a verse. Well, he gave me another verse. This ain't, this ain't the verse he gave me, but he gave me another verse of why this is happening. And these people that are complaining, why, why, why they're in the situation that they're in. Because God had gave them away, but they, they don't follow Jesus. They're not following Jesus. And they believe that they believe their lie that Satan has given them. Because as you, as you see right here, and this is in Luke 10, Luke 10, verse 19, it says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread over scorpions and serpents and over all the power of your enemy. And nothing shall hurt you, right? Now we all know that this fake government is pushing up inflation. They're doing this on purpose because it's not inflation. It's not. I mean, there are some countries like like, but not as bad as the U.S. I was in Mexico. Things are abundant. There's no shortage. They have plenty of food. Russia is doing good. Russia has plenty of food, so there's no reason why they have to push up jack up prices, and because of what reason? Um, but Jesus spoke to me. See, Jesus answers. He answers, you know, he answers in so many ways. And, um, 
He, he, he told me why. Because these people are rebellion, rebellious against him. They're not with Jesus. So if you're not with Jesus, you're against Jesus. So what happens? That that's, that leaves room for Satan to come in and destroy you and put you in fear. Now, even though I made a video a few times about food prices, and I asked you guys to pray for me because I was having a little bit of financial situations, and I was like, wow, and I still don't have a job, but God has made a way for me to pay my rent, for me to have food, and that's all that matters because God will take care of his people. We may not know where it comes from. I don't know, like, I don't know the money, you know, it just was there. I was able to pay my rent. I was able to, to buy food. Um, I'm not starving. I'm not in the street, you know. Um, Jesus will make a way. He hears us. And he gives and he gives us authority. So I took back my I took back my finance. I says, in the I I I I I in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that's that 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 spirit of lack. I rebuke that spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. I give authority for you to flee. We have authority that they can't, they don't have authority here, you know? We have to take our authority back, you know? We have to take our power back. God gives us the authority with his name, with Jesus, you know? And so he was explaining to me from the scripture, and I was, I was reading before, I was like, wow, yeah, this, this is why, this is why they, they're going through what they're going through, you know? They don't, they don't, they don't have faith in Jesus. You know, you don't have faith, so they they're living in fear, like I was actually, because I because I even said a few times in my videos, you know, you, you have watched a lot of my videos. I'm like, I, I mean, I understand it's not going to be like Mexico. The prices are not going to be like Mexico, obviously no way. Um, but from when I was here before, I was pretty much buying the same thing, and I'm paying more now than I was like a year ago. It tripled that. This lady, she barely brought cleaning supplies, right? She brought trash bags. She brought paper towels. She brought some Tide for laundry and different things like that. She already spent $60 without needing to buy no food, just cleaning supplies. She spent $60 just on cleaning supplies. Now, what you going to eat? Because obviously you can't eat clean supplies, right? So if she, if she would have brought food, it would have been over $100. Easy, easy, easy over $100. Right? Um, and like I say, I, I, I shop in the neighborhood shops. And here in Brooklyn, it's not so expensive. Now, it depends on your neighborhood, obviously. If you go to like here in New York, the most expensive places for groceries are in Manhattan because of rent. You know, to rent a place in Manhattan, those stores have to spend a lot of money on rent, other other expenses, and this is also why we don't have Walmart. New York City, we don't have Walmart. This is probably the open. It, 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 it is the only city in America that I know of. There's no Walmart. And people ask, why don't have no Walmart in New York City? Well, what is Walmart known for? If they put one, if they put a Walmart in New York City, it would be the most expensive Walmart in America, probably the whole world. Why? All the all the all the tax you have to pay to the city, the licensing to get a license to operate in the city is expensive. The the, the wages in New York City, they have to pay. If they got a rent space, most likely they got a rent space, that's going to be hella high. And then we have a Costco in New York. Got one in Brooklyn. But they was able to find a space near the Brooklyn Nibble Yard. And this, they actually built it. So that actually is their land. But that's very hard in New York. So it would have to be out, away from Manhattan, away from the center part. Which is probably areas that Walmart could, because New York City is big. Come on, I mean it's not it's not all density. There are some parts of New York that they can buy land, but I think the city doesn't want them here. 
there's a there's more, it's more political. The city don't want him here for whatever reason. They, I, I seen a video about that, and the 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 city they, they they were trying to go I think to the Bronx. There was some land they were trying to buy out and they was going to build in there, and the city I think disapproved of their uh, they disapproved of it for whatever reason. I don't. Know. But um, yes, God answers our questions. He answers us. So yeah, so Jesus and and and, and I don't know I don't know. Was these girls Christian or not? I don't know. I can't judge because I don't know. I don't know them. I don't know them at all. But from the way they were talking, they was definitely had fear. And they, they, they had anxiety. Because you can see it. And it, and it touched my heart. And, and I said, Jesus, Jesus, bless them. And um, he spoke to me. He says, you, you ask about other people. You ask, you, you're crying out about some, someone else's trouble. I wish I had it, I and I had it, I had it here somewhere. I gotta find it though. But he, yeah, he, in the scripture, in the scripture he guided me to. He guided me to a scripture from the phone or for something else that I would say, wow, this is, you just answered me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he guided me to that scripture. He said, you, you, you cry out to me about someone else's troubles. So basically, I was crying out to Jesus, not for myself, but for these women that was in desperate need. And he explained that scripture, like you say, the Bible is alive. This is his word. And you will get everything you ask for in his word. And sure enough, it came clear to me why they was having those issues. When we don't have faith, and we lack faith, fear comes in. And fear is not from God, fear is from the enemy. So we cannot let the enemy put fear in our heart. We have to take authority, you know? And like I say, we're not perfect, it happens. Like it happened to me. I was kind of stressed out last week about, couldn't find a job. You know, I was getting, people was asking me, you know, to come in, but I didn't get any hits. And I'm seeing my food bill. I I usually put, I usually spend about two hundred and sixty dollars a month. That's how I was when I was here before, because I have a budget for everything that I spend throughout the week or the month. Sorry. And I noticed that when I went to Mexico, I come back that same two hundred and I'm single. I'm by myself. I don't need a lot of food. I'm by myself. I don't have any kids, I don't have another mouth to feed, just me. And I don't eat that much. As you see, I'm small. I don't eat a lot of food, right? So I don't eat, and I don't eat out much. Sometimes I make sure myself once in a while, but I don't eat out much. I cut that out, especially now. So living from Mexico, I hardly eat out. Like I wasn't eating fast food, but sometimes I would go to like certain restaurants and there was like, there was, there was a few restaurants I would go to when I was in Chinatown. I would go to like a Chinese, but I started eating Chinese food altogether too, because God has told me, the Holy Spirit says, do not go to these Chinese restaurants. For whatever reason, the Holy Spirit telling me not to go to Chinese restaurants. I'm sorry, China, any Chinese watching me, it's nothing against you. The Holy Spirit is telling me not to eat in certain places. So I just go with the Holy Spirit. And fast food is definitely one. The Holy Spirit tells me not to eat fast food, which I already know why not. I already know why don't go to fast food, because the food is not good. It's too many chemicals, all kind of crap they put in the fast food. But now it's getting expensive. For whatever reason, I don't know. Probably because they gotta pay pay their employees more wages. And wherever their supplies, whatever went up, they pass it to their customers. And that's just that's that's what they usually do, right? If 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 I gotta if I have a restaurant and my steaks go up, or my produce go up, well I gotta change the menu. I gotta Push it over to the customer. And that's what happens. This is the life we this is the world we live in, right? Economics. So, yeah, so that's 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 what I want to talk about today. You know, um faith is very important. Now, I already have, I have faith, but like sometimes my faith rivers sometimes. It rivers sometimes. And I'm not gonna lie, like I said, I, I just came Christian not too long ago. I'm still new. I'm still new and, and, and I, I, I'm still new. 
And and God and I still tell Jesus all the time, I'm, I struggle. He knows that I struggle, but he tells me, stay focused on Jesus. Don't focus on what you can't afford. Don't focus on those prices going up. Don't focus on inflation. Don't focus on other people's situation. You pray for them. Don't let it get you down. Because I'm a very sensitive person, especially when I see people in need. I, I, this is the kind of person I am. You know, um, if I see someone suffering, it just hurts me. It just hurts my heart. And God knows it. But he tells me, focus on me. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. And so that that was the big thing, you know, that I that you know he 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 definitely answers, you know. And like I said, I talk to him all the time. It's like I'm talking to you guys right now in this video. I talk to God. I talk to the Lord. You know, I don't just talk to him in prayer. I pray too. But also just throughout the day. Like if I'm looking at something on, on YouTube. And, and the reason why I watch news, not like I said, I don't like watching news. Why? Because the majority of things on news is is just fear. Fear to fear. Something bad is going on. Like what's going on in New York City? Like today, perfect example. I'm on a train. I had to go to the, uh, I went to the library. So I'm on a train. And out of the blue, this guy. He was quiet. I looked at him because he would moment it to himself, you know, which, okay, whatever. But then, when I, so for the record, I, I, you know, I just, I just stay alert. Just, just, you know, it's my surroundings. We have to. This is what I do. Um, this guy started manifesting demons. He was manifesting. Everyone looking around like, What's going on? Everyone's getting scared. He was just rapping, you know. He was rapping. He was singing some kind of rap song, some kind of whatever. I was in rap no more. I guess I was in the rap. But he, he was he was getting angry in his rap, like going. Argh. I knew what it was. That's it. Name of Jesus. I knew what it was. People they, they just they just in fear because they you know so they start moving. From that end of the car to this to the other to you know away from me, just the spirit is scattered from the guy because you know he started manifesting demons and stuff like like he started he was manifesting. I mean he was literally manifest. That's why we gotta be careful who we listen to, you know. And I said this in, in my many videos: rap music, R and B music is secular music and is definitely demonic. I listen. I used to listen to that stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I had a friend named George, right? He was from California. Good, good, good friend, you know. Um, he told me one time, he said, you know, James, I know when you listen to that music, you, you look evil. You look, you look, you look, you look more angry. And and I'm using that like that. Like I'm using calm, you know what I mean? But he said he, he and, and I didn't, and at that time I wasn't a Christian. This was years ago, like, years ago. I didn't, I didn't take notes until, I, until now. I'm a Christian. I understand why. Yeah, he would tell me, he said, James, man, with, I noticed when you listen to that music, you, you you seem so angry and evil. You seem like you're, you're angry and, and, and aggressive. You're aggressive. I'm like, really? He said, yeah. And he knew that's not me, but I, 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 I kind of it kind of bothered me a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. But now I know why. You understand, a lot of these rappers, these artists, especially hip-hop, and R&B, 95% of these guys make a covet with Satan to get that, to get that title. That's how they get to where they are. I used to live in Hollywood too. Hollywood is very demonic. The music industry is very demonic. And nowadays, they're not even, Satan's not even hiding his face anymore. If you look at a lot of these, which I hope you don't look at them, but if you look at a lot of these Grammys and these music awards, they're so demonic. Satan ain't hiding no more. He's telling, he's showing his face like, this is what we, this is what we do. Satan is not. That's how you know. And he, and. <laughs> God's good though. This is how you know we're in the last, we had we the end times. 
I mean, a lot of these these these, these, uh, these, these artists they, they they wearing upside down crosses. They wearing the horns. They I mean they so wear this demonic. They're so demonic. So yeah, a, a lot of these artists they make they make a pact with Satan and for and for fame, and that's how they get to what they got. So obviously Satan is telling the lyrics to say. That's why in these lyrics, if you, if you listen to anything of R&B and rap music, it's always talking about something with drugs, cheating, um, saying, saying the cuss word, swearing. That's not of God. And you know, if it's not of God, you know where it's from. It's even from, 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 from an enemy or God. It ain't no between. Right? So, and you might hear some people say, oh, you're just hating. I don't hate. I have no hate in my heart. I'm just telling you where it really is. Sometimes the truth hurts. I used to love, how I'm hating, I used to love, I used to listen to it myself. And that's what a lot of people say. Oh, man, you just hate, man. You know, you just hate and you're Christian. And that. No, I'm just, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with that because I used to listen to the music. I used to listen to the music. I used to, I love music. I, mean, I, used to, I listen to all type of music. I used to listen to some rock and roll. I used to listen to some um, um, pop music, even K-pop from Korea. I listen, I listen to some J-pop, Japanese R&B rap because it got Japanese pop too. Got, I listen to, I love all music, right? I was, I was a music king. Trust me, I was into music. Now, since I became a Christian, I had to let that go. Do you know how hard that was? Literally, do you know how hard that was to let music? I, that was my passion, even though I never could sing one lick, can't sing one note, but I love listening to music. It would calm me down. It would actually, but what it was also doing, I didn't know it was making me someone I wasn't. Other people knew it, they seen it. And, and come to find out, to be honest with you, this guy Jordan was a Christian. So he's seen something that I didn't see. We have to listen, and, and, and believe it or not, a lot of Christians listen to R&B. I don't know why. They listen to secular, I don't know why Christians, they still listen to secular music. They're Christian, but they still listen to the world music. I don't know why, I, I really don't know why. I just pray for them. We're not supposed to, we gotta be careful what we watch. We're not supposed to watch scary movies. We're not supposed to watch movies with violence. Sexual, anything that's that's doing with sexual um, content, anything. Like we have to be careful what we, what we what we view and what we listen to. What we put, because when you you open up, you open up a doorway for Satan to come in in his in his dominions. When you when you when you open you listen to that stuff because that's his music. So I can't rebuke Satan. I can't rebuke him. You know what he gonna say? No, I have the right. You you. This is my stuff. You can't rebuke me when you're opening the door to me. And a lot of us don't know what we want to talk Because Satan is so crafty. I got I got it. And I even catch myself doing stuff. Oh, man. I repent, Jesus. I repent. I repent. Because especially in today's today's world, Satan is so crafty. Now, I don't like giving him, giving him all, all, the, all, the, all the, the attention. But we have to know what, we, what we're dealing with. But yet, how are you going to rebuke something when you allow him, you open him a door open? And I was talking to um, someone from the Christian family about um, dream catchers. Dream catchers is not, <laughs> it's Native American. It's Native American. But it's my daughter. Listen, it's your house. It's your house, not your daughter's house. If you know you have a dream catcher in your house, you need, you need to go through your house and get rid of things of the mind. Because those and and this poor and this poor person, she, she you know, she has she has she's struggling. She's being attacked. And I, I know why. I know why. But she won't tell her daughter to get rid of it. So you so you have a you have a, a portal to Satan. That dream catcher 
is bringing in demons. That's why I, I constantly look through my place. Do I have anything open to a demonic spirit? Because I used to have, back in the day, you know, I used to be the New Age, which is witchcraft, right? So I used to have crystals. I used to have um, Buddha statues because, you know, I love, I love oriented culture. I had to get all that stuff. Um, I had to get rid of a lot of stuff, like dragons, get rid of all that stuff. Because those things are demons. They all, they, 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 they open. Now, crystals, crystals were in the Bible. Yeah, gemstones. It's not demonic. You can use it for decoration and stuff like that. No, you know, you got Grand, grand Top to be marble. No, that's, but most time you see people wearing a crystal like I was or had them in a in a tray or whatever it's usually not for decoration I don't have nothing to do with crystals anymore I don't use it for decoration no more because I, I know what I used to be into and I know what I had them for I don't want no temptations I got rid of every crystal that I had I, it, it, was, it was I had some nice crystals too I took them all the crystals and took and took them to the sea and threw them in the ocean. All of them, all of them, all of them. It was hard for me to do. It was hard for me to do that because I love crystals. I love the way they look, the colors, the. But because of what I was into, I didn't want to have that door open anymore, or even chance it. I got rid. Of, I got rid of everything in my home. Everything, everything. Like literally, I have nothing in this place. That's a demon that that can open up for a demonic spirit. So this this person I was that, that was saying this to me, I was, she said, "Well, my I'm Christian and my daughter's not Christian." I said, "Okay, but she's living in your house. She's living in your house. If you live in someone else's house, you have to follow their rules. And it's one thing if you don't know what's there, but if if it's on her wall." In your house, you need to tell her to take that out of here. I don't want nothing like this. It, it, it ca it's causing me, I'm getting, t I'm getting demonic attacks. And that's probably why, you know, and, and I know, I know why, you know, and I just pray for her, but she, she's been going through a lot, but she has something in her home that I know of that she just told me. She might have other things. Who knows? That's why we're supposed to go through, we literally, we're literally to go through our home and remove because the Holy Spirit will, will, will chastise you about it. Like the Holy Spirit will tell you if you have something in your home that you're not supposed to have. Dungeon books on Dungeon and Dragons, books, Harry, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. If you have any kids that have anything that's, that's related to Harry Potter, you gotta get rid of it because that's, that's, that's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And I understand that a lot of people love Harry Potter. The kids, it's witchcraft. It promotes witchcraft. Harry Potter is not just a kid's movie. It promotes witchcraft. Okay? And the Holy Spirit would tell you that. If you have anything in your home that the Holy Spirit should tell you, this, hey, this African mask, Take it, get rid of it. I had to get rid of a lot of stuff. You know, people, and, and it's, it's true because when you travel to a different country, when you travel to different countries, you have to collect different souvenirs, right? And, and I, try, I travel a lot, so I love buying little trinkets and things like that. But now, I won't know. Now I got to make sure, okay, what is it? Okay, what's what's behind this, this, this? What, or is, what is it? Is, 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 it, is it, okay. Dragons, China. China. I love Chinese culture, but China has a lot of demonic things. Like right now, they, 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 it's, it's their Chinese New Year. They're, they're having, um, I used to always go to their Chinese parade thing, right? The dragon thing. Now I'm Christian, I don't go to that. Today's, today is Valentine's Day. Today's Valentine's Day. As a Christian, it's a pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. And if you don't believe me, do you, do your do your do your digging of where how Valentine's 
where it came from. I kind of been through that anyway because I, I used to, I used to do do I, I asked about the cupid, you know, the, the, the naked day with the cupid. Well, that cupid is the reason why we have the, the problems today. Fornication, sex, sex without marriage. Yeah, it, it's terrible. Anything that the Catholic Church approves of is a red flag to me. So, yeah, we need to we need to really be careful what we what we what we get ourselves into. You know, the whole the, the, it's a reason why the Bible says it's a reason why the Bible says many of my children will be destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The gateway to hell is so wide. And the gateway to heaven is so narrow. Now I know why. All these pagan holidays that we're serving out of God. Look, and and, and what, the, what the Catholic Church have did is manipulate it. Like we're actually serving him, but we actually serve it another God. Like Christmas. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th. But I get another video. But as I said, we as Christians need to question and and why leave why leave anything, why leave anything at chance? This is our salvation. You don't want to pass from this life and be judged on what you did. And you can't say, well, I didn't know, Lord. Did you study his word? Did you try to, did you try to, did you ask? And, and, and I know it's a lot. It's, listen, I'm learning too every day. I'm learning. It, it's a lot. It's a lot of things. Being Christian, it was always easy. And it's all oh, just, oh, all I got to do is just accept the Lord and Jesus as your, as your Savior. It's more than that. Yeah. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And confess out of your mouth that he died for our sins and rose on the third day. But you have to know the walk. There's a lot of things that you have to disconnect from of this world. A lot of people are doing it. I just told you, a lot of Christians still listen to circular music. They're still listening to R&B. Now, a lot of black people will say, oh, but that's part of my culture. R&B is part of our culture. I'm black. Do you want to go to the lake of fire for your culture? Is it really worth it? Think about it. Is your culture worth you going to the lake of fire? Who's more important? Jesus or your culture? So you're putting your culture in front of Jesus when Jesus clearly says you're not supposed to listen to certain things. There's a reason for why that. There's a reason why Jesus said that. Because you're leaving a door open for Satan to come in. The music. You know, Satan was the king of music in heaven. That was in the Bible. He, Satan was the king of music. That's why he, that's why, that's, that music is the, is the easiest way to get to people. And I, and I see why. Because people love music. I, I know, I love music. Hey, you cannot talk to anyone that don't love music. And you may see people that don't love watching movies or some people love, but everyone loves music. I haven't heard one person that don't love music. Satan took the, the number one thing and perverted it that he know people will love. Because he was the king of music in heaven. Satan was the most beautiful angel in heaven. That's why he wanted to be God. He got kicked out of that. So, I'm saying all this is because Jesus, and I'm, and I'm back to why I'm, make, I'm, I'm saying all this. If you're not sure about something, ask Jesus. Talk to him like I'm talking to you. He will answer you. He may not answer you like talking directly, 
but he will put something in your heart. Maybe someone, he, he works, he, 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 let me tell you something. Jesus has a personality more than you think he does. And a lot of people don't give Jesus credit. He has a personality. He's not this strict person, I see the hell. No, Jesus, he's a loving, loving Jesus. He has a personality. Okay. You'd be surprised. He's a loving, loving father. And let me tell you something. If you're not sure about something, that's why you must stay focused on Jesus. Because he tells us this. Stay focused on him. Because as soon as you don't focus on him, it's easy for Satan to come in and we and we go his way into your life and distract you with something. And then now you don't have focus on Jesus, you focus on this. We not focus on this. What's more important? This or this? I would say this. Because to get this, you need this. So focus on our Savior, your Lord and Savior. Because you focus on him, you cannot go astray. You can't go astray. He he will guide us. When Satan tries to come in, he's going to guide. He's going to, nope, no, 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 don't go that way. You go this way. So when we start getting fear, we have to remember, oh, like he said, like, that, like, man, like two days ago, I was kind of getting frustrated a little bit. I was watching the, um, about the migrants. Now, I don't know if you heard about this, but here in New York, our so-called Mayor Adams, he wants to encourage residents to start adopting. Listen to what I'm telling you now. Listen. He wants us to adopt migrants into our homes. If we have an extra room. And that's when I got kind of saying, got me. I had to scratch my head to the point where I almost peeled the skin off my, off my head. I say, whoa, he wants us to bring in strangers. And we have kids in America that needs homes. We have kids that people can adopt. They are from America. Kids, not adults. Kids, American kids that need homes. And you expect us to open our door to people we don't know who they are, what they even here for. Most of these people are criminals. Most of them are from Venezuela. And you know, and they're already forming gangs right here in our city. You want them, how that's gonna work? And I'm, and I'm thinking, what is this? I'm going crazy, family. I'm like, I know in my head what I'm thinking, Lord, and that's why I said, Lord, you, and you know what? Focus on me. Don't focus on them. Focus on me. You're right, Jesus. He's going to take care of him. The Lord's going to take care of him. Don't worry, James. Don't, James, you focus on me. Don't focus on your politicians. Because we are, he's going to fix them. He's going to start cleaning the house. He's going to take care of the politicians. Because I, I, if I didn't know Jesus, I would be like, what? What kind of government are we what? This is getting to be this is getting to be a real kangaroo circus in America. It's get, you want people to let people in their home. You don't even know who these people are. They're living in your house? And you don't know who they are? Because you brought them here. You made you made who made this city a sanctuary city? No, we didn't. Not the citizens. Who who made them? Who made that's not our problem. You make them a secondary city, you need to have places to put them in. Yeah. All the abandoned buildings, you put them in there. You may not put them at home. Now, I'm not saying they should be on the street either. No. But you don't open your home to strangers that you don't even know. Do you think I could, do you think I could go to another country? Let's say I want to go to Russia. <laughs> I love Russia. You think, oh, I'm I'm seeking asylum for America. I have nowhere to go. Can you please let me in your home? <laughs> I don't 
Marvin Van Esquire. What? Ooh, this crazy American. <laughs> Not Russians are. Ah, yeah. Get out of here. Who do you think you are? But this is this is how the world is. America is making a fool out of itself every day. And I the reason and like I said, the reason why I watch a lot of stuff to see where the Bible, because everything is coming to pass. The Bible is really and, and all they doing is making them which is gonna happen anyway, making things come to pass of what the Bible spoke about. The corruption, all this. And God said, James, don't let it get you upset. You know, you know more than a lot of people know. Let me handle it. And that's God had God say, focus on me. What you hear on the news, don't worry about it. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You just focus on me and everything will be okay. And that's what I did. So I'm like, Phew. but a lot of people are up and up and about that. Like, and then and then some people say, oh, we need extra money because we can't pour, we can't because you know um there, there are some people that's it, 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 this is not bad it really is, it is especially in this city it's already expensive and people can't even afford to pay their rent so a lot of people are losing their homes. So what the, I guess by them the way they're gonna the way that these corrupt officials are gonna do it, we'll pay you. We'll pay you half of your mortgage. I guess that's what they're gonna they're gonna kick out there. We'll pay for you to keep your homes. We'll pay your mortgage. Oh yeah, 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 okay. And that's that's what they, they, you know these, these crooked people, they're gonna figure out what. Now, like I say. And in New York State, we have a law. Because this is this is gonna happen. I'm telling you, they're gonna do they're gonna take them in and gonna be ready. Because you're you taking people in from a different culture, a different country, these people are just different. They're different. And gonna bring them to your home. Well, you're gonna you're gonna bring in more than them. Because now you gotta bring in their baggage, their problems. Love to drink, party, whatever, and they're gonna turn your home into an unsold home. And now you're gonna to want to, you're gonna to want to evict them, and you can't. You can't. You can't evict them. We have a law in the state. I think this is one of the states. One thing. It's hard to evict people. It's hard to evict people in New York State. Once you bring them in and you give them a key, and especially these people that's going to take it, like if they if they take that deal, you won't be the victim, and they can sit there for a year, free rent, off of who tax off of, off of who taxpayers. So <laughs> I don't know if you heard about this family, but um, it's definitely here in New York now. Most likely it's going to be everywhere. Especially if you're a sanctuary city, if you're a sanctuary city, they're gonna be pushing. They're gonna be pushing this agenda. Now they're gonna want. They're gonna want you. People, they're gonna want people to take them in their homes. And what they're gonna do is try to work out a deal where we're gonna pay your your mortgage, or at least half of your mortgage, if you can't afford. Because and a lot of people are gonna jump on that. Jump, jump on that back. Because a lot of people don't want to lose their homes. A lot of people don't want to lose their homes. So any kind of relief. To keep their homes from the bank taking their homes? Oh yeah, they want to jump on that. And guess what? Now you just open a can of worms. Because now those guys are gonna come in. You know that hotel, the Royal Hotel, the things that was going going on in that, in that place? They they trash that place. Party in there, having sex, all kind of weird things. They 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 trash that hotel. That hotel, and that was a five-star hotel. They come over here, just trash the place. And now you want them in your private home? Yeah, that's not going to work too. too. <laughs> God is good. Focus on Jesus. No matter what, you focus on Jesus. If you have any questions, like I did, talk to
to God. Let's talk to Jesus. I want to, what's going on with this? He will answer you. He will answer you. He, he will tell you where to look or he, he, your spirit will guide you to it. I'm telling you. You did to me last night? God is good. Jesus is good. Our Lord and Savior is good. He hears us. He knows what we're thinking about. And he will respond. I'm telling you. So, you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Um, guys, be kind to one another. Pray. And uh, we're going to get through this thing. And another thing. I got to tell you, Holy Spirit, talk. If the Holy Spirit is waiting on me, this. Because I hear this in a lot of videos. The Holy Spirit also tells me, stop asking for the rapture to come sooner. Stop asking for the rapture. Stop asking for the rapture. And when you hear the word, keep looking up, it's not because of the rapture. It means look up to him. All night. I know things are getting that bad that people want to go home, but and I also said this in another video stop focusing on the rapture. Because when you focus on that, you take your eyes off of what you need to really be doing. The Holy Spirit is telling you right now don't, don't keep praying to Jesus to come quick. Don't, don't do that. Because we still got work to do. We still got lives to save. We got souls to save. Oh, it was a revival in Kansas at the Walmart. I don't know. I think it was a few days. I've seen it recently, but it was a, a revival broke out in the Walmart in Kansas. Somewhere in Kansas. I don't know the Kansas City, but it was it was in Kansas in a, wa in, in a Walmart. Thank you, Jesus. He saved his souls in the Walmart. Out of all places, Walmart. Them prices get too high. <laughs> you show up and be <laughs> but yeah, it was a it was a live stream. It was a revival. I would say, whoa, Jesus, thank you. It was a revival in the Walmart. You see, this is why we still need to have time on this earth. I understand people want to go home. I'm hearing all the time, you know, just pray to get out of here as quick as possible. No, no, no. Jesus don't want us to do that. Because then it's, you, you put it, it's all about you. This is not all about us. This is not all about us. I understand things. This is, we're here to tell as many people about Jesus and save as many souls as we can. That's why he has it. That's why he has us down here. I mean, yeah, he can take, he can, he can come down and just take, but no. He wants to, he, he still has work to do. We still have work to do as a vessel. So please, Family, stop praying for Jesus Christ to come quick because now you make it all about you. And you really do. You think about it. I understand. You, you know, we don't want to see no one left behind. People are going to be left behind. We already know that. But we don't want to see people get left behind. We want people to get saved. I just told you, there's a revival that broke out in Walmart. I don't know how many people became born again then. I don't know. I don't know how many people would say, but it was all I know there was a revival in Walmart in Kansas. Google it up. Google that up. Okay? And we should not be trying to trying to get out of here so quickly. Well, how we got friends or family that are not safe? Would you want them to stay out here doing it? I mean, it's all been crazy now. It's hard right now. You want them to be left behind? If you can save them, save them. It may take time. Who knows? We don't, know, we don't know how much time we got left. It could be tonight. It could be in the next five minutes. I don't know. But we still have, that's why I make these videos. I don't know how many people are watching them. Not many people are watching them, but I'm just doing my job. I'm doing this just to put the message out there that Jesus is here for us and we need to put our faith and trust in him and focus on Jesus. Not focus on the rapture. We need to stop focusing on that. 
It's going to come. We might, and we might not even see the rapture. Like I keep telling you, I told you, I, I said, I made a video about this two weeks ago. If you focus on the rapture, you're going to, you're going to miss other things. We have to focus on bringing people to Jesus. We have, we're, we're soldiers. We have work to do here. We have assignment. We're here on assignment. Okay. It's not always about us. Because that's being selfish. Oh, I just want to get out of here. And leave anyone else here? Yeah, people are going to be here. I heard one lady say in a video, we did all we could do. It's just time. I just want to go home. We, we did all we, we, we made. We did all we could. There's churches everywhere. That's not the point. Because Jesus don't see it that way. That's why I'm glad mankind doesn't have that kind of power. Because our Jesus is justice. Our God is justice. He's mercy. People want to close the door already. Wow. What about other people that, that could be someone could be saved today? Why would you want to just, just, just check out so quickly? Just want to check out. Let, let's leave anyone else here and just check out. No, we're not doing that. We want to bring as many people we can. We still got work to do. Don't make it about yourself. That's being selfish. And Jesus don't like that. Jesus do not like that. I'm telling you. God don't, don't like a selfish heart. That's being very selfish. Because now you're making it about me. I just want to get out of here because it's all No. 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 So, that's all I want to say. Just don't make it about you. Make it about people being saved. Because what's going to come on this earth after it does happen I don't wish I'm my worst enemy. I don't wish I'm my worst enemy. It's going to be bad. It's, you think people say it's bad now? <sighs> I don't think they only knew. I haven't had any visions about rapture dreams. I haven't had any rapture dreams or any vision of how it will be. But I can imagine. Because I see how it is now. And it's going to intensify. Violence is going to intensify. And... Like, I mean, look at look at our history in life. Look at from the Roman Empire. From, look at the history. How the look at look at medieval medieval Europe. What they was doing over there, beheading people, doing the medieval times, doing the Viking times. So I I can imagine how it's going to be when God removes His hand from this earth. I can't just go go back. To, and worse, because it's, it states in the Bible that when that happens, it's going to be worse than any time ever on this planet. And it's been some dark times on this planet since the planet been in existence. Look at history. And the Bible speaks that it's going to be so much darkness than the, than the world have ever seen in the existence of the earth. Can you imagine that? The Bible says it right there. So whoever's left behind. So my whole point is let things run its course. Turn it all joy and be glad in it. God's blessing us. This is actually a good time for us. Okay? Because we're going to be safe. It says it right there. Harm will not come our way. It says it right there. Luke 10. Verse 19. Read it. It's in the book. So, I think that's it. So, you guys have a wonderful day. I love you guys. I really do love you guys. I mean, you know, um, I do. I, I wouldn't be sitting here making these videos. I mean, like I said, I'm not, uh, 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 I don't like social media. I don't like social media at all. Especially being on social media. Like, I never, don't, I don't like it. But Jesus, the Holy Spirit, tells me I need to do these videos. I have to. I got to be obedient. I don't want to do it. I had I started a channel months ago. I took it down. Holy Spirit says, you, you, you need to do it. It's not even an option. Not an option. Sometimes Jesus will tell us to do something we don't want to do. But I guess being a Christian, that's what we speak. We got to be obedient. 
we can't get we, we, we can't be against God. And and sometimes he's gonna make us do things we, we're not comfortable doing. And it's not because I'm ashamed to say I'm a Christian or I'm ashamed that I love Jesus. It's not even about that. I'm not the kind of person to be showing my face on the end. Like, it's just not me. But I have to. This is something different that I have to get used to doing. Not that I want to. But for Jesus, I'm doing it. It's not, it's not I don't have a choice. So I just pray that you guys understand my content. Those that are not seeing, that are watching my videos, just to check it out. I pray that you become born again and you give your life to Jesus before it's too late. Because we are, I mean, we are out of time. I mean, the Bible, we, we are out of time. I mean, things are, the way things are going, you know, in, 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 the new, in the new world order, they're trying to push this agenda quick, quick, quicker than, 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 than what they really wanted. If you didn't know, they're already trying to, I told you, they're already doing the mark of the beast already. Kind of right now in certain other countries, they're already making people download this digital ID. Yeah, fifty countries, fifty countries are doing it. They're doing it a a, 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 a pilot program where they they taking out cash altogether. They, if you have a big account, you gotta switch it to the digital ID. Everything is on your app. Download the app, and you're doing it so. They're setting up the foundation for the mark of the beast. They're, they're set the actually, I think it's already set up. They just have they just haven't all in on it yet. They got they, they're gonna what I know what I think they're gonna do. They're going to cause another pan uh, something where there's another pandemic something, and they're gonna force it. That's what they're gonna how they're gonna do it. Whether they crash the economy because if they crash the economy, that's that's the best thing to do for them. If they want to do this, which they might do this, because they're already talking about the dollar being devaluated. The dollar's losing its value. They already got the BRICS currencies, nations coming up. If they crash the dollar, oh, believe me, they're going to come up with a digital dollar. And it's not going to be like you think. It's going to be mandatory because the dollar is not going to be worth nothing. So they're gonna remove all the paper currency and issue in the digital dollar. And to do that, you gotta get the app, anything in the big accounts, be wiped out. Start with gonna be the great reset. It's called different things. The great reset, that's where, that's where the great reset comes in. Because then they can push the market of beast because the dollar is the world reserve currency. Everyone uses the dollar besides Russia, China, and they still use dollars. Well, not Russia, but China still use dollars. Um, but if the dollar collapse, if this country, if they crash this country's economy, do you know what's going to happen to other economies? Yeah, it's going to be a problem for everyone. And now that's when the world's going to come together. And that's when the, that's what I believe the market of visa come in. I don't know if we still be here or not. I think we will still be here because th that's coming. I think that's going to happen anytime. Every time I look at the news, the way the, the way the economy is in this war, about yeah, something's going to something's going to the balloon is keep getting bigger and bigger. It's going to bust. They they they're trying to print more money. They, 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 everything's all messed up. So once the dollar crashes, it's going to crash. Stock market is going to crash. It's going to crash a lot of things. Other economies are going to crash with the dollar because most every other economy needs the dollar. Every other currency is backed up by dollars, right? There's no currency in the world that's backed behind gold no more. No, that's, that's, no. I think only maybe the Swiss franc. Their currency is backed up by commodities. But listen, we all know if the dollar crashes, we know what's going to happen. And that's when. So you already know. So I'm gonna leave it at that right now. This is probably 59 minutes. I'm gone. You guys have a wonderful night. Be blessed in the Lord. I love you. See you in the next one.